Martin Savage, tell me what happened at Baby Cooper's funeral. Well, this was a funeral held in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. It was held the same day those documents were released, by the way. And it was very emotional. It was said to have several hundred people there. But you had the mother speak. That's Leanna Harris. And she really gave what was the first family statement on all of this. It was supposed to be the eulogy for her son. But instead, she stands up and begins defending her audience. At one point, she says that he is a loving and caring father, at which point the congregation stood up and applauded. And then right after that, the father comes in via telephone and thanks everybody for being there. In this document, it says the boy says he was placed in the basement by his stepmother and barricaded behind boxes and totes. Placed. That doesn't mean that the stepmother is trying to help him. It sounds like he was forced there. And of course, all these are only allegations. Nothing has been proven in a court of law, Parag Shah. That's correct. And it could be part of punishment and she forgot about what? him. Wait, or wait, she wait, could be wait. trying whoa, to help him. Whoa, please stop. Did you say forcing the child to stay in the basement is punishment? Did you just say that? Like a timeout. Okay, you remember how I told you one time that you should be a parent, that you're missing so much joy? Yeah, scratch. You don't need to be a parent. If you think it's okay to give your child a time out, I barricaded in the basement okay. with nothing what to I eat. What I said is, you know, no, about I the heard what you said, Parag. No, I heard what you said. Giving the child a time out in the basement with nothing to eat, barricaded. What, is it okay to beat him with a PVC pipe too? Some kind of a, a, a railroad on Cooper's father because already, Alex, there are already these kind of ads coming up on YouTube blasting Vic Reynolds for, ta for, for taking on the case. Like he should just go, oh yeah, nothing happened and, and close the case. This needs to go to a jury. And he's already being blasted with suggestions he should be thrown out of office. Well, he which should is be ridiculous. And the point is, that's why they're having a PC well, you know hearing. What? So everybody knows, if oh, he, okay, if, that's why you're bringing the case. No, if he's a public official, he should not be concerned with whether or not he's going to get oh, a bad please. line you know in what? the local newspaper. Put him if he up. has it. If you he, can't have it both ways, no, Sanchez. He, First you say, he, why is he going to a probable cause hearing? And I tell you, because if he had a grand jury, then you, Alex Sanchez, would be screaming, oh, it's a secret grand jury. They don't want us to know the evidence. So now that he's having a PC hearing in open court, you're now complaining, oh, why is he having no, a PC no, hearing? No, no, I'll tell you why he's going to the you probable know, cause really hearing. You really do beat all. No, you he's really do. He's going to the probable cause hearing because he does not have a particularly strong case. And he's hoping beat to throw Yes. The judgment on to the judge, Nancy, and you know I'm right about that. If the child had died of heat stroke, would you expect to find blood or vomit? I may see I may see vomit with aspiration of vomit, but I would not expect to find blood. That's not what one of the autopsy aspiration? Findings. What do you mean aspiration of vomit? The the child would vomit when he's in extreme discomfort, extreme uh, suffering, and then. He, as he breathes in, he breathes the vomit down his trachea into his lungs. Um, Dr. Mannion, with heat stroke, uh, the temperatures were in the 90s that day. How long would it have taken the child to have heat stroke and die? I think within uh, 30 to 60 minutes. The temperature in that car would rise very quickly, and once that child reaches 107 degrees, that's by definition heat stroke and the, you're basically cooking your brain. In the last hours, stunning and damning new details emerge. Daddy, in a court of law, there, listening, sitting stoically until evidence comes out, he's sexting six different women, sexting, sending pictures to women of his erect penis as his toddler boy, Cooper, Bakes dead in the car at the same time. Evidence indicating the baby scratching his own little face, crying out loud, abrasions on the back of the child's head as he likely rocks, banging back and forth, calling out for daddy. We are taking your call straight to the courthouse. Haston Willis, Marietta Daily Journal. Haston 
bombshells in court. And I was watching him like a hawk, Haston. And he sat there stoically, no movement, nothing, until it came out he was sexting six different women after he leaves his child in the car. That's the first time he snapped up and started talking to his lawyer. And the lawyer, Maddox Kilgore, jumps up and objects. That's the first time he showed emotion, Haston. I picked up on that as well. He didn't seem to be bothered by some of the re uh, revelations about the child, some of that type of thing. But when it came to things that were about his own life, that's when he seemed to be bothered the most.